A rational polyhedron P is said to be integral if P equals the integer of P. Here, the red polyhedron is not integral because its integral how is given by the green portion, and the green and the red do not coincide. Determining if a rational polyhedron is integral is in general difficult. But there are characterizations and sufficient conditions that allow us to recognize integral polyhedra in certain cases. And here are some of the results. Suppose that P is a rational polyhedron in Rn. Then P is integral if and only if every minimal phase of P contains at least one integral vector. An immediate corollary of this proposition is the following. P is integral if and only if every phase of P contains at least one integral vector. Another corollary is the following. P is integral if and only if minimizing C transpose X subject to X in P has an integral optimal solution for each integral tuple C for which the minimization problem has an optimal solution. The second corollary can be strengthened a bit. And we'll look at the sketch of a proof of the following result. Let P be a non-empty rational polyhedron in Rn. Then, P is integral if and only if the optimal value of the problem minimizing C transpose X subject to X in P is an integer for each n tuple C with integer entries for which the minimization problem here has an optimal solution. Notice that we are now looking at just the optimal value. So this is indeed stronger than the second corollary here. Let's first look at this direction. Suppose that we have an n tuple C with integer entries, such that the problem minimizing C transpose X subject to X in P has an optimal solution with optimal value V, which is not an integer. And we want to show that P is not integral. Now, let F denote the set of X in P such that C transpose X is equal to V. Notice that F is a phase of P. But C has integer entries, and V is not an integer. So whenever X has integer entries, this equation will not be satisfied. And so F is a phase of P that does not have any integral vectors. So by the first corollary here, we can conclude that P is not integral. Now let's prove the converse of this theorem. First, we write P as follows. P is the set of X in Rn satisfying AX greater than or equal to B for some matrix A with integer entries and a tuple B with integer entries. This is possible because P is rational, and it can be defined by some rational system. By clearing fractions, we can assume that all the entries are integers. Suppose that P is not integral. Then by the proposition here, P has a minimal phase that does not contain an integral vector. Since F is a minimal phase, F is an affine subspace given by the following. The set of x in Rn satisfying a prime x equals b prime. For some subsystem, a prime x greater than or equal to b prime of the system defining P. Because f does not contain integral vectors, this system has no integral solutions. And by the result we saw in the video on linear Diophantin equations, we know the following. Now let y prime be y plus m times the vector of all ones, where m is a positive integer such that y prime is non-negative. Well, notice that y prime transpose a is integral, and y prime transpose b is not an integer. That is because we assumed a and B to have only integer entries. Because Y prime is non-negative, Y prime transpose A prime X greater than equal to Y prime transpose B prime is a valid inequality for P. And if X is an element of F, it will satisfy this with equality. So if we let C transpose to B 
y prime transpose a prime. Then the problem of minimizing c transpose x subject to x in p has optimal value y prime transpose b prime. But c is integral, and y prime transpose b prime is not an integer. The result now follows. 